What's going on guys? Welcome back to Boykin Outdoors. Um, today we're going to be doing a boat review on this little vlog that we've got going today. Um, I had a few questions about what kind of boat we're running in the past um, and I thought maybe that I would kind of just show you that you don't need anything really fancy or expensive to hunt around southeastern North Carolina or really just about anywhere. Um, so we're just going to go over the boat, kind of what we've got on it, what we run, um, how long we've had it, that kind of stuff. But before we get into this little vlog, I want to just take a second and say thank y'all very much for all the new subscribers out there. Um, it means a lot to us. It makes us want to keep pushing forward and keep making new videos when uh, new people subscribe. Um, so appreciate that. And uh, if you're new, just tuning in, thank y'all for choosing the channel. Take a look at it. If you don't mind, hit the subscribe button, help us out so we can... Uh, keep pushing forward and keep making new content um, all right guys so we'll get started real quick with the boat review here like I said she's nothing special but uh just kind of show everybody what we're working with so what we have here is a 16 foot uh, double wide low boat uh, I picked it up four or five years ago I think I paid about two thousand dollars for it it came with a two-stroke 50 Johnson um, on the back of it We've since replaced it. As you can see, we're running now a 25 Yamaha four-stroke. Great little motor if you're in the in the market for a new motor. This is a 2018. Um, fires right up every start. So if you're looking for a new motor, I suggest it runs great. So now we'll move a little bit closer into the internals of the boat. We've got our gas tank, oversized gas tank for the longer runs that we make. Everything, obviously got the battery to run <clears throat> the light system that we have which I'll show you in a minute um, and then it also that motor ha is an electric start as well as a pull start so that battery is the starting battery as well and then like I said it's super simple from there on we've got you know carpeted flooring this is where the side console used to be right here pull it out and just put that down we throw dead ducks or you know the anchor sometimes if it's muddy we just throw it there just kind of keep it from getting it on the carpet not that we care too much about it, but uh, <clears throat> yeah. And then I built this, uh, well, <laughs> I had a buddy of mine actually build this deck on the front. Shout out Nate. Um, we built this deck on the front, or he built this deck on the front uh, for fishing mostly. Um, and it's actually turned out to be pretty useful. It's, it's a comfortable seat when you're riding and stuff like that. And it creates the storage space up underneath where you can throw decoys and life jackets and all that and they can't really see under there um now that i'm doing a lot less fishing and a lot more duck hunting i almost wish the deck would have stopped like right here so you can kind of see it would made it a little shorter gives a little bit more space back in this area right here um but now the next thing i'm gonna show you is also with this deck my buddy put a little hat so as you can see our life jackets and stuff are down in there you can get in there pretty helpful pretty useful um, starting to rot away but that's normal for as old as it is so now I'm gonna get into like the electrical and what we've got going on in the electrical department here so same buddy who built the deck on the front works on <clears throat> sport fishers and the Onslow bays around here which are center console sport fish or uh, fishing boats for uh, people that are not familiar um, so basically what we did is we came in here put a little switch Got our switch panel right there. And you come in here. We've got one of the switches isn't hooked up. That's why you'll see that wire just kind of off. Um, then we've got our battery start, our battery on off switch. We've got our fuse block. And it all runs through that white wire. I'm not sure what gauge wire that is. I can't remember what we decided on. Um, but it runs all the way outside of the boat until it reaches. I think it runs straight into the light bar can't remember exactly how it goes but it, it runs into the light bar and our as you can see we have deck lights i guess is what you would call them around the edges i picked these deck lights up on amazon you can see them they're not the prettiest right now but i picked them up for twenty dollars for two 18 foot sections and this is a 16 foot boat so what i did is i bought the two 18 foot sections and just wrapped it around the front there you can see around the front of the deck and then around the back and I really just used the tape that it came with and I'll show you when they look like lit up so I'm gonna go ahead and light them up you can see they're kind of lit up now super bright I may if I can find a picture I'll add a picture of what they look like 
when it is dark outside. And then the other one is our light bar, which our light bar is on, as you can tell. Um, and then this the trailer that we turn these lights off. And then the trailer that I picked up, I had a buddy back in high school that his dad owned the shop and it was just sitting out front. I think it was his cousin's trailer or something like this. This trailer is actually for a Sea Ray uh, trailer. The Sea Ray boats, the big heavy kind of deck boat looking things. Um, I think I gave him 400 bucks for it. Uh, it's way oversized for the boat, but I know it's not stressing the trailer at all and the boat sits perfect on it. Um, I've since replaced the hubs, replaced the leaf springs and all that stuff down there. Re-greased all the bearings once a year. Um, but yeah, so that's that. And then we'll get into the best part. So the best part that I was just talking about is the blind here. Um, we don't use it a whole lot around here just because we're hunting a lot of flooded timber and some of the spots we can get out and stand in and it's better to stand next to a tree than have a big boat sitting there. Um, or a lot of the spots, even if, if we're hunting spots that are over our heads on the rivers or you know wherever, we can just pull this boat right up into them trees, into the flooded trees, and it, it blends right in. I mean, never, I mean, mostly what we're shooting around here is wood ducks anyway, and the wood ducks, they don't really flare too much off of it if you can get the boat somewhat hidden. Um, but yeah, so we'll get into the blind now. So what it is, is it's a scissor rig design. <clears throat> I had my buddy Trey, which you've probably heard me talk about in future videos if you are a returning uh, viewer. Buddy Trey and me decided to make this, so we made it out of conduit. Um, so here, I'll try to get a better shot of it. Um, so it's made out of conduit. I can't remember. The conduit's super cheap. I think it was, uh, I think we got maybe three or four 10-foot sticks, and it was like maybe $10 a stick. So you're looking at maybe... I'd say $50 maybe on the expensive end if you need that extra fifth piece. I th now that was when I built it. Now the way the economy is now, there's no telling what the prices are on. I'm not really sure. But so we did that. We got a couple of these connectors and we put the conduit. We cut it to the size to fit this way and to fit this way. And then we put them into these little connectors and we ran just self-tapping screws into it. <clears throat> and then we realized that that wasn't going to work so we ran some welds around it a little bit just kind of hold it in place um and then my buddy trey he was the one who made these um brackets right here as you can see they just kind of wrap around and then bolt down into the rib of the boat here um not well you know just press into it and it kind of clamps in um and then we kept having problems with it breaking, so we came up with some other designs like this. So it this it's allowed to move. It'll it can move like this front to back, and it kind of gives it some wiggle room, um, helps it out. Please don't judge those welds. Some of those are mine. Not very good welder, but it's holding. Um, but yeah, so it just stands up. And the scissor, like I said, it scissors and stands up. Here, I'll go ahead and stand it up for you. So we'll set it up real quick, show y'all how it kind of goes together. I'm not going to fully unfold the blind all the way out just because it's wet and uh, kind of, it's not hard to roll back up. It's just kind of time, kind of time consuming and I don't really want to get wet right now with all the water that's caught up in it. So it's pretty simple. You just climb up where you already be in. Just go up like this. Kind of pick it up. We got these little pins. So as you can see the blind is set up now, the scissor part of the blind is set up, 
and all this is is just I got a tarp over the uh, I got a tarp backing just some camo netting uh, being held on the zip ties and stuff like that and then you just roll the tarp up with the netting inside it protects the, the netting while you're going down the highway and it also creates like a barrier when the wind's blowing that tarp kind of catches some of that wind when it's set up and kind of keeps the wind off of your wire hung. Um, but like I said, yeah, it's being held with bungee cords, you unbungee it, you roll it down, and it does keep a little bit of memory, but once it hits, once it is down enough during the season, uh, some of that memory starts going away, it makes it a little bit easier. And I also have some pieces, they're in the storage unit right now because we haven't really had to use it, um, but we have some pieces that will just, they clip on right there, as you can see, they clip on around the front, around the back, and then we got a little piece that like covers the motor, um, as far as that goes. That's pretty much it. Like I said, there's not a whole lot that goes into this little John boat. Um, this is what we hunt out of. This is what we hunt with. Pretty much every time we go, sometimes we just use kayaks, but a lot of times we're out of the John boat. And I just wanted to make this video so you guys can kind of see what equipment we're working with. And as you can tell, this is not <clears throat> like a very expensive piece of equipment by any means. It shows you that you can get the job done duck hunting without having the most expensive. Sorry about that. Hopefully you guys can still hear me. There's the one spot that I picked. The plane was flying directly over. But I just wanted to show you guys that you don't need anything super expensive to duck, get started duck hunting or duck hunt for a while like we've been doing. Um, you can get into it relatively cheap, uh, all things considered. I know the markets are a little up right now on boats and other things, but if it's not fancy, it gets the job done. If you got any comments, questions, concerns about the boat um, that you want to know about I can try to answer them in the comments below uh, you can message us on Instagram or Facebook I can try to uh, answer those um, hopefully we'll have some more uh, blog style reviews and kind of things coming in the next couple weeks um, for you I'll try to post weekly at least until the season comes in and then it's gonna be hunt videos hopefully um, but yeah like I said, thank y'all very much for all the subscribers that have subscribed and all the subscribers that are going to subscribe. If you haven't subscribed, please just hit that subscribe button to help us out. Um, trying to grow this page the best that we can. Um, so, as always, thank y'all for your support.